So this is like an example of, of what we just talked about. So this is the plunger, okay? You press this in. And the next energy, or the next unit is going to be energy. And basically, when you do this, you compress this, you store potential energy. Mother Nature doesn't like potential energy. That's why when you release it, it goes flying off. So the lab that you're going to do on Monday, after your nice three-day weekend, is going to involve this situation. So this is just what we talked about up there. What's the initial momentum of the system? Zero. Zero. So when I hit that plunger, what has to happen? Equal and opposite. It will change in momentum. Like one will change a positive certain amount, and another will change like a negative. Perfect. Okay. So there is no way I could hit this button, and they both start drifting to the right, because therefore it can't add up to equal to zero. The other way that you can view this is Newton's third law. Newton's third law says what? Every reaction, Every reaction there is a reaction. reaction. So if I hit this, okay, they're going to go flying off in opposite directions. Cool. Okay. Now, if I take one kilogram mass and put that on one of them, now what's going to happen? It's going to go opposite so directions, but the, the one with the mass will move slower. Why? Because it has more mass. So what? More inertia. So it needs less velocity. To create the same momentum. Momentum. Okay. So if I do this, all right, there is a noticeable difference in those velocities. Do they still add up equal to zero? Yes. This one just has a lot more mass. Okay. Now that's where you have everything starting to rest. And I don't want, right now, I want you to get out of your mind and say, oh, all momentum problems, everything adds up to you. No, it's not true. So the other thing that you assume about momentum problems is that, is that you don't lose energy in the collision, okay? Momentum has to be considered. So the other situation you can have is that I'm gonna take, I'm gonna have this one at rest, and I'm gonna have this one moving towards it, okay? Now, if that's moving right away, what is your initial momentum not equal? Zero. Zero. So if that's the case and I give this a push, okay, now a couple of things happen. This, this is going to have a certain amount of momentum. So afterwards, what has to happen to the amount of momentum of this car? That has to decrease. Why? It transfers. Yeah, so whatever momentum this loses has to be gained by this. Okay? Now, here's another thing that happens. Look what happens to the gap between these two after the collision. So what happens to the gap between these two cars? It increases. It increases. Why? It increases the velocity of, the, of that car. Is faster. Yeah, this is faster than this one is. Therefore, the gap is getting bigger, which it should, because this has a lot less mass, so therefore it should be going faster. faster, okay? Now, you can also have a situation where you have this at rest. This one comes in, hits. Now, in this situation, what did this one do? Stop. Stop. So if one stops, then what has to happen to all of that momentum? Transferred into it transferred over here. So if you know one thing hits and stops, that means all of that momentum gets transferred to the, to the other one because the momentum still has to add up to zero. Now, if I make this massive enough, okay, it has to be pretty noticeable difference in mass. So now I'm going to do this, but now what did you notice about this one? It moves back. Oh, it moved in the opposite direction. So since it moved in the opposite direction, what do you know about its velocity? Negative. Or change sign anyway, right? Yeah. So if it came in with a positive velocity, it's going to leave with a negative, negative velocity. So what do you think is going to create a bigger change in momentum? A situation where it just hits and stops, or a situation where it hits and it bounces back? back. Why? There's a greater change in velocity because you're completely going over. Yeah, you're going all the way through zero. Keep that in mind. Okay. Now, 
The next thing you can have happen, and these are magnets, okay? So that's, that's what the answer is. Now, this is what, I, oh, it'll make sense in just a second. I call this the California problem. So I've got one at rest. This one moves in, it hits, and they move off together. That's why I call it the California problem. It's like, oh, let's move out to California. We'll be hippies. We'll move in together. There we go. Okay. So when something's hit and they move off together, that's what I just call it a California problem. So there's the vocabulary. Now, so here's the story. Is there some momentum to start with? Yes. Yes. So therefore, there has to be the same momentum afterwards, right? But if they hit and they move off together, what do you notice happened to the velocity? It decreased. It decreased. Why? It increased the mass. More mass, but the same momentum, you have to be moving slower. slower. But an interesting thing happens. When they hit and move off together, do they have the same velocity? After the collision? Yes. Yes, do not make this complicated. Yeah. Yes. Why do they have the same velocity? It's one system. Yeah, it's one system. They're moving together. So now, if they hit and they bounce back like this, okay, and you might have a situation where you have everything moving, okay? You don't, there is no law that says, oh, something has to be at rest. You could have them moving in opposite directions. It doesn't make any difference. But the only time they move off with the same velocity is when they do this. It's a California problem. They hit, boom, they move off together. Okay. Now, here's the next thing. So these are different polymers, okay? So one, when it hits the surface, is very bouncy, okay? The other one, when it hits the surface, just kind of stops. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to get this cart where the front edge of this is at 16. And I'm going to lift this up and then I'm going to drop it. So I'm going to lift it where this thing is horizontal. So this is going to be at 16 and it's going to roll. Right? And I want to see how far this thing rolls. So I'm going to lift it up horizontal. Boom, let go of it. And that made it roll till about 37. Okay? Now, I'm going to do the same thing. But now I'm going to use the one that doesn't bounce. Okay? Now that one, it only rolled to about 27. So, everything was the same. Same mass, they were lifted to the same height, they hit with the same velocity. But why did this one, that's very bouncy, make it go all the way to 39, but the one that just hits and stops, it only went to like 27? The bouncy one caused a greater change in momentum. Oh, why? Because it went negative, so it went back. Beautiful, okay? So when this one hit, because of the fact that it was bouncy, it's exactly what Gapshon said. That went from a positive velocity all the way to zero and then into the negative region. So since this underwent a greater change in momentum, guess what? The cart has to undergo the same change in momentum because momentum has to be conserved. So the one that just hits and stops, all right, it just went from some, some, some velocity to zero. Wasn't as big as change in momentum, therefore this cart didn't undergo as big a change in momentum. So that's why the one that bounced made it go farther because since this underwent, underwent a greater change in momentum, the track had to go an under greater, or the cart had to go a bigger change in momentum. Got the idea. Good, grand, back we go.